All right. Um, as an opener, because uh, I need to understand the audience, uh, who's using, so a few questions. Who's using Team Center today in the room? And Siemens cannot raise their hands. Okay, good. Who's using any other PNM platform than Siemens? Okay. And who's thinking about switching to Team Center? Okay, come see me afterwards. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, I'm, I'm just gauging. All right, so full name is Florian. Everybody calls me Flo, uh, and that's switching already. Okay, <clears throat> so I spent 15 years chasing problems, I guess, because I've been in doing consulting for those 15 years straight out of university. I studied as a uh, CAD and CAM expert, and very quickly um, I was brought on projects to utilize the little experience I had back then to uh, control the data. Just evolved in many, many things. I worked in uh, CAD automation, in CAM automation, a bunch of PM projects. I even went uh, as far as switching to SAP projects for a very short period of time before I went back to the more core engineering processes. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm writing here, it's years worth of PM story from my kid's bedtime. I've got, you know, if you want to talk transformations and how it goes well or what are the challenges, like, I've got enough stories for that. So I'm, I'm not going to do a technical presentation today. Um, it's more going to be, a, a, you know, sharing my insight with you uh, first on framing PNM, Framing Team Center, because if you can get a platform that does pretty much everything and everything, you know, take Team Center, that's a good thing because there's so many business processes that are embedded in it. Ask our sales organization that's in the room. Um, easy to sell and not easy to sell at the same time. So we're going to demystify a, little, um, a few con con concepts. Um, and also I'll touch on um, the transformation aspect of things and, and sort of the challenges and some of the recipe that, that can be attached to it. It's also going to be a good segue from uh, Guy's presentation because I'm actually reusing for a more complex point of view uh, the systems engineering uh, embedded through Team Center and how it can extend uh, to that. So, you know, AI and Rene will touch on this this afternoon. AI is the great subject at the moment. Um, if my experience is not good enough for you to understand, I guess we'll rely on, on an AI as well. And we'll ask ChatGPT what's, you know, what a modern best in, in class PNM software can do today. It's going to give you a lot of text, so might as well listen to what I'm going to say because it's easier to read uh, or listen, I guess, than, than reading that. But basically, it's, you know, the core concepts is centralized collaboration. Everything should flow through your engineering data, uh, i.e. via the, the, the bomb and, and all the objects. He touched on creating relationships in between the different contexts and, and objects, uh, either from an MDSS perspective, but it applies to all the business processes uh, from an engineering, a manufacturing, a service standpoint um, uh, through, through a PM platform. Scalability, flexibility, user friendliness, all of this we're gonna, we're gonna touch base on. So in order to frame the, we only have like 40-ish 40, uh, 40 minutes together today. I can't talk about everything, but I'm gonna talk to you in the three ways of engagements I usually have with my customers. Um, usually, uh, and, and Maya and Siemens, and especially in, in Canada, we face very different uh, customer types. We've got startups and SMBs that want to start with Team Center, they don't have processes in place in a modern PLM system. At best, they do file base or, or, or PDM uh, management of the CAD. And they want to know, like, you know, what am I going to get at as a starting point? And what we're going to, we're going to call that the collaboration aspect. So in the AI thread, again, we, we asked Dali to, uh, Rene actually had the idea, we asked Daddy, we, we fed a photo of me to Daddy, and we said, like, put me an orange shirt, you know, the Maya color, and um, tell me what collaboration looks like from a consultant's perspective. Um, so that's supposed to be me um, and a bunch of people wondering what collaboration is all about. That's going to be the first thread of the presentation. 
The next thread is going to be how you can extend the data. So less conventional PLM-based processes like CAD management, but more like, and that's where we're going to tie it to the, to the MBSC story, how you link that with you know, requirements, quality, simulation, this type, of, this type of processes. So again, we asked ChatGPT, how does it look like when you, know, you start to extend your data and have more processes embedded inside Team Center? And apparently, I'm growing hair, so things are going the right direction. Um, and also, people look more composed, so I guess that's, that's the way to go. So we're going we're gonna to explore that thread. Once we'll explore, we, we will have explored the different um, areas Team Center can help you from a functional and a business process perspective. We're going to talk more um, scalability because in, in modern ownership of an enterprise system, we need to talk how to go to the cloud, how to interface with the rest of your ecosystem in the enterprise. Again, ChatGPT apparently thinks that if you're very scalable, you become very fit and, you know, people have a good outlook on, on, on the business perspective. So, you know, AI jokes aside, um, collaboration, extend your data, and scalability. So let's start with the collaboration aspect. So Team Center, people thinking about it or people not knowing about Team Center, um, it's a top tier uh, PM platform. Um, I have spent years at Dassault System before I joined the Siemens ecosystem, so I can actually compare. We're in the best in class type of PM software here, used by the greatest companies in the world. Um, it's powering innovation and it's, and it's embedding the best engineering processes inside one collaborative platform. So I want to say don't look at this slide, but kind of look at this slide because that's the whole framework for the whole presentation. Because we need to capture in one slide what a modern PLM is all about. And Team Center can do a lot of things. So ideation system, uh, actually I'm glad Guy just spent you know, um, almost an hour talking about systems engineering because the backbone is managing your portfolio and then on this, defining the requirements and the architecture of your product. You'll see there are a lot of tools or connections to and from Team Center to make that happen and to logically store the information uh, for your product inside the, 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 the PNM platform. Once you have that, we'll make a tie to design. This one is where it started 30 some years ago, whatever. On, on, on PDM, um, we're controlling the design data. The analysis is uh, another example we'll look at uh, today where you can loop your whole uh, process and embed some uh, analysis tools. This is dear to our hearts at Maya as well because we've got a lot of simulation experts. We can embed that in inside Team Center. Multi-domain uh, BOM, um, this is very important. Uh, even like very recently, the paradigms are still changing on engineering BOM. We're, we're not just looking at you know, your good old uh, you know, item bombs that we're sending to your ERP. Now it's evolved into prototyping uh, through the BOM. You can, you can manage the design differently uh, from, from, from your actual uh, engineering BOM. So you know, a configurable BOM, uh, everything is doable in the platform. Extending to the manufacturing, um, manufacturing bomb, bit of process, etc. You can you can do that uh, in in your platform, and you know that's where the process gets different from company to company as to how it's embedded inside PLM or you know how you're connecting to your uh, MES, how you're connecting to your ERP, etc. The service is a big component. Um, there are a plethora of tools that can connect to Team Center and help you manage not only your engineering or your manufacturing way of uh, controlling your data, but also trace the serviceability of your data. And again, depending on the industries, that can take very different shapes and forms. Now, there are, if you're looking at from left to right, you know, from ideation to all the way servicing, and that's why we call that product lifecycle management going all the way. Right now, modern PLM and Team Center is very good at that. You can embed cross domain enterprise processes in it. Full-fledged QMS, quality management system, inside Team Center. 
You can embed your suppliers inside Team Center um, through supplier collaboration, and you can do program and project schedule. So all the way to the task, and all the way up to your milestones and controlling um, um, tied to the program management of your product. And the last thread on the right side is it leaves with the accelerator platform. So the accelerator platform is pretty much the portfolio. Everything that's doable with Siemens tools, and uh, you'll see a lot of those today. What you need to know, Team Center has got many strategies slash products to integrate within the whole full portfolio of uh, Siemens tools. So, first thread, collaboration. Again, leveraging this framework, if we overlay where we're trying to um, frame the next couple of conversations, we're going to look at um, two different point of views. First one is, and I, uh, so by the way, I, I purposely excluding, excluded, sorry, um, uh, doing CAD management in Team Center because that's, you know, a given. Everybody's integrating to an ECAD or an MCAD. But what I wanted to do is the first collaborative example point of view is how to navigate your product and try to put yourself in a non-designer shoes here. You're a user with the right access in the platform and you're going to navigate your product. I'm gonna click on the video. And you're going to do what we call smart discovery. So the smart discovery is basically trying to create a session to get uh, through the navigation to the right level of your product without, and can I actually pause this? I cannot, so I'm gonna go back. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Okay, um, so I'll let the video run through when I talk. Uh, so so um, what I was saying is, uh, yes, just, just creating a context, you know, even just five years ago, we would just you know, brag about the fact that your data is indexed and you can search through attributes and you can search through your data because it's so controlled, et cetera. Right now, what you see is an automatically generated truth of the most up-to-date data for that product. And as a non-designer, I can actually go through my 3D and what I did is I not selected an item in my uh, structure, but I did click on an item directly in the 3D, which highlighted uh, the item in the structure, and I'm doing a search here based on proximity first. Um, so I set a parameter for my proximity, and then I'm sub-selecting uh, through the metadata the system that I want to target. So again, ties to system engineering. So I have, I have gone through selecting the uh, electrical system that's right close to the direction system. Obviously, I guess in this example, you could have navigated other ways because it's, it's, it's not a massive uh, product. Think about an aircraft though. You know, positioning, navigating without needing to be really uh, understanding the, product of the, the structure of the product. Second point of view on collaboration. Here, say I know exactly the item I want to go in my platform to. I can actually access the uh, control data for here, an example is the 2D, 2D drawing, and do some mockup on the fly. Actually, I could have chosen even a better example because that, that mockup also exists in 3D in, in, in the platform. What's interesting here is that it looks like I'm doing another drawing. That's actually a tech pubs component that's living in the platform, so we're more on the service side of things, that's got ties all the way back to the same item I'm, I'm looking at. So through relationships, through object-oriented platforms, we have access to all the data and we can do um, um, advanced search and, and markup on the fly. So you have to imagine that all this could be through tasks, through change management, you know, and then, uh, uh, based on the feedback because there were some uh, field events that came back through the quality system, right? So if you imagine the, you know, um, the, the whole platform, um, the whole framework that we're talking about, you know, we're, we're, we were in the middle because we were searching on the product, but it can come from other external processes in the platform. All right, so that's the basic to just give you a glimpse because we don't have too much time on 
um, you know, modern collaboration uh, going around your data in the PDM platform. Let's talk about more advanced point of view here. Extending your data. So once you have everything in control around the design, around your BOM strategies, you want to be able to tie the whole digital thread strategy and go along those metro map stops as we talk about. There's different steps in your design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look into a point of view where we go from system engineering to functional level in the platform, all the way looping to an analysis, just to make you understand what Guy was talking about from a team center point of view. Another example we'll go very quickly through is you know, quality um, management, how does that work? All right, so since I can't pause, I'm gonna run the video and I'm gonna talk right after. I think that's gonna be easy. So I know what I'm gonna do. I think I found a workaround. I'm just gonna go back. So first half of the video, what we saw was taking a requirements object from the platform, going in the system modeling workbench, here where you've got your system to system map, and taking that requirement and embedding parameters inside that requirement that traveled in my system engineering world. You can see that what you see on the right is Active Workspace, the web client of Team Center. It's fully embedded through an integration inside the system modeling workbench. What we're doing after that, we're taking the uh, parameters that we had and we're creating through the logical architecture. So you've got logical objects that we saw earlier. You're creating basically a, a, a test setup for those, parameter you, you, those parameters you embedded at the system engineering level. Once you've done that, look at this. This is super quick, uh, but what uh, you just saw is if you're looking at your logical architecture in all of your objects inside Team Center, the video is gonna pause in just a, just a sec. So we're gonna let it finish. Okay, it'll pause on that, which is a good end result. So what happened is I've got my system engineering software. I took a requirement on the fly from Team Center. I brought it in my system engineering model. I embedded parameters, those parameters through the integration traveled all the way back to the logical uh, objects in Team Center. Those logical objects, I created a test against it. I have what we call TC4 SIM, so I've got uh, configured automation to launch my simulation tool right from Team Center. Run some simulation. The result traveled back into my test plan here, and it's green, so I guess it's good. But the, the point here is that You've got a continuity, and that's a perfect example of what we call digital thread. Continuity from three different systems, requ uh, uh, requirements team center to system engineering, back to team center, to simulation, test result back to team center. And because all the objects are connected into team center, then you know, you've got all the traceability that you need, and that can be embedded through either design um, iterations or even through the change management if something uh, needs to happen after the first iterations of the design. So this one will go, go less in details because it's less visual, so it, it's, it's, but it, it's a continuity of the same principle. Here is a, an embedded requirements. You've got the documents for the requirements. Either it's through an integration with a requirements software or it can just be your document that's embedded inside Team Center and you're taking objects and making them requirements. And here what we're doing is a full FMEA uh, process. So quality management where against the function that's tied to the requirements, I'm creating some uh, failure uh, reports, and here I'm going to have the, the full result of the, uh, of the FMEA uh, in just 20 seconds. So I could go into details. Actually, I could bring an expert on quality management team center, and we could have like a, a whole day conversation just around quality. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to switch to um, the next thread. But basically, those four point of view that I showed you was to explain to you modern navigation in a light, uh, 3D-oriented, 
collaborative platform web tier. And the, 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 the two last ones were uh, more advanced point of view where everything is connected together with other integration and other softwares. So let's talk about scalability then. Let's imagine we spent six days looking at that framework and all the use cases you can embed in, into your software. You're going to tell me, cool, you know, lots of functions, lots of things I can do with Team Center. Um, but how does that work for my, you know, industrial context, my company? I can um, leverage this into a high-level strategy, you know, and adapt to a, a, a new operating model that I decided I wanted to go through. And for this, I'm going to take a first example, and I'm going to talk about product sustainability. So leveraging all of what's available in Team Center to fulfill your um, uh, sustainability goals. Um, and after that, we're going to talk about uh, another type of strategy, which is you know, modern ownership. We're going to talk about Team Center on the cloud. And after that, we're going to conclude with uh, how to transform. So basically, you know, finding the right partners. And I'm going to give you uh, um, a little insight on like the top three uh, things that I see uh, in, in our projects usually and how it can go well. So let's talk about sustainability first. We said pretty much all cross-domain that interacts, touches, or are at the core of engineering uh, are now available uh, in active workspace in modern team center, modern PLM on the web. So sustainability is a strategy. It's not a function in team center. So if you look at this framework, if we're going from you know, clockwise, looking at your uh, sustainability targets, obviously we talked about requirements. I mean you know, the best way to capture your actual targets on sustainability is to embed it through your requirements uh, strategy. Team Center can do end-to-end -end materials management from a design perspective. You know, some of you probably actually uh, capture uh, your material today uh, through your CAD. Well, you know, since you have a whole uh, architecture of your product inside Team Center, that's the right place to capture that and do analysis on uh, material um, compliance for your product. Factory optimization, there was a question about you know, how we can tie back to uh, you know, industrial equipment uh, optimizations. That goes all the way to also your manufacturing plant uh, simulations, which is something you can do from Team Center, but also um, some, some other software we can integrate with that you can uh, optimize for uh, the manufacturability of your product. Obviously, you know, the carbon footprint is not, is not just the product itself, but also the way to manufacture it. Okay, so we're going to talk about physical versus digital. So, cool concept, digital twin. Uh, we saw many examples uh, in, 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 in events and, and in the news. Uh, but here, it actually takes uh, shape into uh, following a proper strategy. If you've got your physical twin that's collecting data for you and going through an IoT strategy, for instance, all the way flying back to your engineering data, um, connecting with uh, the accelerator platform, have software to do that. If you collect the feedback um, dynamically or, or even just entering manually in, inside Team Center, actually um, leverage that into your sustainability strategy. Goes away to uh, from the other end, if you want to be predictive about how sustainable your product is going to be, you can do that from the simulation end. So digital twin is not just comparing physical and digital. It's actually making the, the, the backbone in the middle and having some data that's supporting that. So you know, sustainability is a good example for that because Team Center can bridge uh, the gap between physical and digital uh, through your data. Supplier collaboration. Um, Guy touched on it, uh, that's, that's very important. Um, there are multiple ways to integrate with your suppliers, um, but you know, uh, whether it's directly in your platform or it's through a portal that's leveraging Team Center, you can cascade, cascade sorry, your, your requirements on sustainability uh, to your suppliers. And so you know, extending the loop of sustainability uh, with that. 
regulatory compliance, um, there are a lot of industry layers that um, are templatized inside Team Center that uh, can help you uh, follow the different regulatory compliance from the different sectors you have to, to follow. And obviously the recycling planning, if you're looking at a, uh, an SBOM uh, perspective, you can actually do some uh, simulation on this. So this is just an example to say, we can talk functions, but we can apply those functions to strategies for your company. So that's what scalability is all about. And why I'm talking about that is because sometimes companies would come to us not to say, can you implement Team Center or can you this or can you that? Sometimes they actually come and say, look, we know we need PLM. We're not sure how or why, as a matter of fact. But what we know is that through the investment we're going we're gonna to make, we need to transform in such and such fashion. So you're reversing the uh, typical system integration point of view to more like a strategic um, uh, digital transformation. And because everybody has used the word digital transformation for the last 20 years, nobody wants to hear it anymore. But it actually, it actually exists, can actually take shape through strategic uh, alignment leveraging a modern PNM. So we're switching the conversation to um, another type of strategy. We're going to talk about ownership of Team Center. Um, I don't have proper data, but um, on, on the customer we support today as, like, as to cloud versus on-premise, what I can tell you is the data is looking completely different with the new conversations we have in the sales cycle. You know, I don't think there's a single sales cycle that's starting without um, us advising, the sales organization, um, advising or the customer asking directly for uh, what, what about cloud. So there's a couple of things that are interesting. Gartner said it's going to be a trillion worldwide in you know, a few years. So we know it's coming. We know it's big. Good news is there are strategies, there are products to fulfill that. I think this is a more interesting point of view. It says the most popular perceived benefit for software buyers adopting SaaS is not necessarily just the cost. Yeah, it's up there but it's more around agility and being resilient. And I think that's a better look out. That's a better way to look at it because uh, you can read the data if you go uh, and get the presentation afterwards. But it's, it's, it's a better angle to not just about, uh, talk about cost because there are a lot of hidden benefits going to uh, you know, a modern ownership on the cloud. So first one, fast implementation. Okay, so to preface that angle of the conversation, we need to say team center or Team Center on a private cloud, or Team Center X, which is the uh, software as a service product for Team Center, is exactly the same code base. So you're not getting different flavors, you're just getting a different type of ownership. And so the fast implementation is because it's the same code base, there are offerings and there are areas of the application that are very easy to implement. And they've done some great level of automations to make that faster than specific on-premise uh, dedicated to your design infrastructure type of thing. Expert separation, I mean, okay, I can tell you I'm hiring a lot in the PLM sector in North America and in Europe. Finding team center experts is not the best part of my job because it's not easy. Uh, so if it's not easy for me in the consulting sector and I know what to look for, for companies starting with team center, it's gonna be increasingly harder. And that reason, the cloud and having a managed service team in the background is a key benefit. Again, agility, not necessarily cost first. So this agility, you know, the, the cloud elasticity they, they, they talk about, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all done for you from, from an IT and from an infrastructure perspective. So that ties to the uh, next point as well, the cost reallocation. You know, we're not necessarily saying it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, magnitude, uh, great magnitude cheaper or anything, we're just saying you reallocate the cost. But by reallocating the cost, what you're really doing is reallocating the risks because you, you don't need to buy your infrastructure. You need to just comply to what's available for you uh, for your needs. So you, we, we, we de-risk that whole component for you. Advanced security, I mean, no, don't even need to talk about it. Even if you're thinking like controlled data, uh, from an ITAS perspective or from, from control goods in Canada, there are strategies for uh, the, the cloud that can uh, work for you. And again, resiliency and continuity. You don't need to upgrade or think about upgrading your system. You've got a continuous rollout. You're on the latest and greatest versions and you've got access to what works today, what's stable today um, just by subscribing, not 
owning the full set of risks that come with a modern uh, enterprise system. Everything I talked about is true in software as a service, but also if you're not willing to go all the way to uh, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, meaning you know, your own private cloud is doable and you can find levels of partnership for that as well. All right, so again, the presentation is like just switching ideas and just going in completely di different directions, so I'll try to pose a little bit. We're still in the scalable aspect of the conversation. How can I scale? One aspect that's very interesting and that I've seen as a clear difference now versus the type of projects I was, I was involved in five or 10 years ago is how and for a good reason, people are trying to get away from customizations, from complex integrations. It's good because Accelerator Platform uh, offers a lot of options for you, either through licensed products or through um, best practices and ways to do the system implementations. And I chose an example that's you know pretty uh, at the core of the strategy for transformations with a lot of our, of our customers is interaction in between your PLM and your ERP. Siemens and SAP, and I'm gonna talk SAP because you know, it, it can interact with pretty much any ERP, but SAP has got the specificity where you have today uh, what we call the gateway product, which is a pre-configured product for you where you can just set how the data travels back and forth rather than just customizing through your API everything that you have to connect in between your PLM and ERP. So, for all the processes of, that we've seen, there are strategies uh, co-developed by Siemens and SAP uh, on you know, how to collaborate bilaterally on your product in generating data, the change management, you know, if you do change, full-fledged change management on PLM that's got consequences on some transactions on SAP side, there's, there's strategies to do that. The manufacturing engineering is always blurry. Your manufacturing bum leaves partially, leaves entirely on one side, another. Either way, there's a way to uh, do that. And um, just, just a picture to say that what we're talking in terms of pre-configuration is a translation. We're talking the same language, but you know, it's like I'm, I'm French and I live in Quebec. We speak the same language, but we don't kind of thing. So that's the same thing here. You know, we're doing the same thing on the material master in, in, in ERP sometimes that we, that, that we do, or actually connects with the bit of material, we need uh, what, what they call the meta-domain uh, model transformation in the middle. Uh, and, and the key here is just to be like, we're not gonna customize every uh, you know, connection transaction. There's actually pre configured products for you. Compliant with cloud um, and aligned with uh, the whole uh, MDSC strategy we saw earlier. How am I doing with time? I've got 10 minutes. I'll leave room for questions. So. Okay, perfect. So let's wrap up. Forrester has got um, an analysis this year, but I think the data is a couple of years old, but it positions Siemens uh, on top of you know, the other big ones, PTC, uh, Dassault with the 3D experience. On pretty much uh, most of the uh, areas to measure a performant PLM. Talking product vision, uh, the multi bomb. Um, I mean, I mean, multi bomb. We're not going to go into details here, but I'm, I'm not kidding you. There's been really basic use cases that have been asked by customer for 15 years that I've seen implemented and solved like last year by Siemens product, and I know nobody can do that today. Um, sustainability compliance, digital threat, etc. All of these that are very cool strategies for modern engineering and embedded engineering uh, inside an enterprise. Today, actually, uh, Siemens is outscoring uh, market share. If you see, uh, in terms of size of the dot, um, Siemens is one of the most used uh, PM platform today in the industry. You can actually um, Google that uh, survey if you're interested in how Team Center is positioned in the industry. Uh, there, there are public summaries for this. So, I'm gonna switch from a complex diagram to another complex diagram, I guess. But what's important if you look at Team Center is what I would call the architecture pillars of your application. If you're using a partner for your 
transformation. We were talking with a few individuals before the presentation about that. You know, this is the most complex portion and at the same time the easiest portion. These are all the apps you can use in, in, in Team Center. And for each one, we can you know, look at a short or very complex project plan. Depends on how you want to integrate your processes in, inside the platform. But what you need to get away from that small presentation I just did is that we're talking about the most modern type of PLM platform and you need to rely on what out of the box Team Center has to offer. It's gathered pretty much like 40 years of requests from customers embedded into modern software that's web-based and that's you know, giving you the best practices. And I guess, uh, I guess I'm not using Team Center for the lighting here. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> there are industry solution strategies um, that are available in Team Center. That's the second uh, pillar you need to look at. Um, Sometimes you need to completely rely on Siemens' experience and embedded uh, templatization of some of the processes and the functions inside Team Center. That's the way to look at it, and you'll, you'll get that you know, CPR versus medical versus A and D. You know, you're looking at very different ways of doing the same thing, but with different terminologies and different ways of embedding your processes. And we can. Um, you know, I was taught when I started consulting to explain that whether you do PLM for a medical formula or you do PLM for an automotive, that's exactly the same thing, but you know, the processes in, uh, behind are very different. What you need to look at afterwards is you know, the non-functional and all the complex data and metadata stuff, all your architecture, the backbone, the security in the platform, that's something that you know, a partner needs to help you as well with. And then the integration and the modern uh, type of integration um, as a summary is what we saw, for instance, with SAP, but you've got other strategies. For example, in the um, accelerator platform, Mendix is a low-code product that can today tap into the data from Team Center and connect with Team Center. You can build your own little applications from your Mendix um, uh, base, and it's all um, uh, connecting uh, to Team Center. So these are all the ways you need to think of like extending your data and scale to the enterprise level. And then um, the deployment infrastructure strategies like we just talked, cloud versus on-prem, et cetera. So I actually like this slide because when we go into first discoveries with a customer, I say, look, let's digest this slide for two minutes. You can ask me five questions on you know, any of the aspects here and that's gonna help us like, frame the initial conversation for scoping, for understanding your, your ownership uh, of the system, et cetera. That's my last slide, and I'm gonna go quick through it, but basically, uh, I manage a team of experts, Maya, uh, specifically dedicated to Team Center, and, and we, do, we do a lot of very different projects. We do Right from the get-go, scoping a PNM for a customer that has little maturity on PNM, we do complex migration for people that have had like 15 years legacy with Team Center that we need to migrate to a modern setup with Team Center. We do the scalability stuff, but we do the rest. We do uh, the enablement. We train. Uh, we do the support for our customers. We do strategies on cloudification. I haven't used a, a single time the word uh, data migration. Uh, but you can't avoid it, so we have strategies for very technical migrations as well. So I'll, I'll maybe conclude with, um, you know, considering how broad, how complex it can get, the type of successes that I've had with customers transforming. And I think it boils down to three things that I took note on my page here, which is number one is share the ownership of the transformation. The best customers or the best success with customers I've had is when I'm not asked to entirely bring the best practices to make magic through PNM, or I was tough enough not to accept to take 100% of the requirements from their old system and trying to fit in within a modern PNM system. It's, it's a mix in between, and the partnership is very important on this by sharing uh, the, the responsibility of managing the scope and doing the transformation. Segways to my second point, the engagement model with that. 
I'm using a hybrid agile setup to transform. So basically, pure waterfall requirements to success, too many challenges, too hard on the scope creep, control, and cost. Full agile doesn't work because we're not developing the software. The software exists, you need to adapt to what the best practices are. But the in-between, what I call hybrid agile, is using, you know, uh, a scrum base, and I don't know if everybody is using agile, but using a uh, sprint-based approach, demo-centric, and go and build as we go together with product ownership from the customer and the integrator side. And I guess, you know, third point is, um, if we do that, we need to prioritize property through a road mapping exercise. So the maturity on the customer side is very important. Sometimes I even start the project, and go like, you're convinced on the value, you know where we want to go, we start with education. I don't even call it training, education. We cannot go into a workshop and decide together what you want from it and what we can bring to the table with modern PNM without you understanding the realm of possibilities. So it takes the time it takes, but it starts with education. Education leads to you having a better product as a customer, having a better product uh, understanding and ownership, us being a good partner, hybrid agile, and usually that goes into the success. And that concludes what I wanted to give you as an insight. How many minutes for questions? One question. <laughs> yeah, okay. I need a glass of water, I think. <laughs> In the back. Getting my exercise. Yeah. So uh, just uh, going through uh, a bunch of the presentations that you're sharing um, with this one and the previous one, it looks a lot like uh, what we're showing for the value there is for a more of an OEM centric kind of type of organization. So uh, when it comes to a tier one or a supplier, let's say, of OEMs managing you know, up to nine, 10 different OEMs. How does that work for your, you know, your model-based engineering that you're talking about? Because each OEM is going to have uh, different requirements. And uh, as a supplier, you do not have the ability to leverage the OE to, to change. So how would you uh, go about managing that? It's a great question. We actually have the case right now. Um, a tier one supplier in the uh, military, A and D, uh, in the US needs to, so they're completely siloed from the system engineering models that are sent by Northrop or any of the OEMs they're working for. Uh, and they have to recreate their own version of the bold down uh, systems requirements. They do that OEM, I, I can't mention the name, but they do uh, test cells for, for, for OEMs. And um, we brought experts from uh, the MBSC group at Siemens. And the first thing the expert said is, I'm not going to treat you differently from what I said to any OEMs in the AND sector. I'm trying to do uh, an analysis on your MBSC maturity. We're going to start from the basics. So the idea is that if you get to the right level of MBSC control as a supplier, you'll be able to exchange directly the model. And by the way, it's, it's apparently uh, the models in system engineering, engineering exchange are still evolving in the AND sector. But you're going to work from the same models, and you're going to work with the same practices. So I guess that's the, that the starting point would be take the same practices as the OEM. It's not because they're bigger that they've got access to more technology. It's made now with modern PNM so that you know, the system works for you. You've got all the capabilities. We just need to adapt them to your context and, and, and how you want to do that. So first answer is, yeah, get to the same level as the OEM. Uh, it, it, it's, it's complex looking, but there's actually the right tools to implement that. The second thing is, in some instances, you'll actually be asked by the OEM to get with the same system so you can actually directly integrate in their um, in their team center. Um, we see that a lot in the automotive sector. It's more, honestly, uh, from, from, from more CAD and a product structure context, but we, we start seeing examples uh, of this boiling down to, as well, the MBSC structure. Uh, so, you know, 
I guess I'd answer like most tier ones are gonna start working like OEMs themselves. That's the strategy. And by making modern software very accessible and very scalable, uh, I guess that's what's opening the floor to. Because before having such a complex framed uh, MBSC strategy into a, a non-premise owned software with a lot of customization because you had a lot of limitations that would have been you know, hard to think about. But now with all capabilities uh, pretty much close to out of the box that you can get with configuration only, uh, I guess that's starting being doable. 